Is your Dell G5 turned into a jet engine that won't play games? Mine too. So today we're gonna repaste this bad boy and see how well it does. See if we can cure the illness that is Dell's QA. So make sure to stick around till the end so that we can look and see how it does in games and if the repaste actually worked. All right, have fun guys. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to take off the back plate. I've done that off the camera, <clears throat> but first let's talk about what we're gonna need to do this. So you need a toolkit. Toolkit I'm using is the iFixit Pro. This is a fantastic toolkit. It'll be linked in the bottom of the description. You're gonna need a way to clean off the thermal paste. I use the Noctua SCW1 cleansing cloths. These things are awesome. For the, our thermal paste, we're gonna use Arctic MX4. And then we're gonna use Arctic high performance thermal pads. You'll also want uh, some compressed air so that you can clean out the fans. Okay, so with the back off, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we unplug <coughs> the battery. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we want to unplug the battery. All right, so we're gonna pull this off here for our power, it's right here. It says battery, it's over here on this side. Make sure y'all can see everything right here. So we just need to make sure that we get that off. Okay, and then we're going to start. <clears throat> now that the power's off, I've let this discharge for a couple days, um, but now that the battery is unplugged, then we can go ahead and start removing our heat sink assembly. And so the, it's actually numbered on this, you, and it starts out at one. Okay, make sure I've got the right bit size. The outside screws are smaller than the inside. So one, okay, two. And like I said, on this one, they're numbered three, Okay, then you go to four, which is over here. Okay, then five, which is up here. All right, then six. Then seven. Okay, and that is all of the heat seat. Screws. Okay, gotta make sure to get the fans as well. So let's go ahead and take those out. These are not numbered. So don't forget where you put them. That would be, that would be bad. If you lost them. Okay. So these are come out relatively easy. Don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on them. those and they will just come off like that there is a ribbon connector right here I'm trying to get it to where you can see it right here okay and just use this tool and you can just pop it off this plastic tool helps so that you don't scrape anything um, you don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on the cables you definitely don't want them to break. Okay. Well, that doesn't want to come off, so I'm not going to take it off. Okay. They are <clears throat> on there, so I'm just going to go ahead and Spray the fan out, make sure it's clean. Okay. 
get any dust that might be in there out. Okay. Then we will remove. All right. And then this right here flips up, just flip it backwards. You can actually pull these through here if you don't want to unplug them. I don't want to rip the cables off, so I've got big hands. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just gonna put them in here like so. Okay. And this is the assembly here. These pink pads, I'm not gonna replace those. Those are thicker than the others. This is the paste job on this thing. You can see it's very, very dried. Look at that. It is atrocious. It is very dried. So we gotta clean that off. I'm resting this on my fans. So I'm using one of these not to a cloths. Looks like my thermal pads are actually in pretty good shape, so I'm not going to replace those because they look to be in good shape. So I'm just going to take this, I'm gonna clean it off. So I'm gonna clean it off on the heat sink first it's really stuck on there. I mean, it is, it is very, very, very dry. Okay. Um, if you don't have these claws, you can use uh, isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips. So you don't have to go out and buy these pads specifically, but they do make it easier and they are you know, formulated to take off thermal material. So I'm just trying to make sure I get it off anywhere. I don't want it to be anywhere that it's not supposed to be. Okay. Get that, let it dry. So as you can see, it's much, much cleaner now. Much cleaner. Okay. I'm going to use a new cloth and I'm going to get it off of the GPU and CPU. Okay. These things aren't super, um, they're not super moist, so you don't have to worry about them leaking. They are moist, um, but they're not like super duper moist or anything. So. Just going to be careful not to get the motherboard components. I want to make sure to get all of this stuff off of here. It is on there quite well. Okay. This is just, I mean, come on now, Dale. Get with it. Okay. That's clean. I'll use my little black tool here. Make sure that any of the, the thermal paste chunks aren't on the motherboard um, because they were, they were everywhere.
thermal paste is non-conductive. Um, so, I mean, if there's a little bit, you shouldn't be too worried, but you don't want to have a lot of it everywhere. It'll ruin pins, that's for sure. You might also want to get some Q-tips if you've got them, just to make sure that you get every little thing. Okay, get it off the board. Just make sure that we get all of it. It's good to be thorough. So now that we've done that, we need to put our thermal paste on. So like I said, I'm using Arctic MX-4. You don't need a ton of it. A little goes a long ways. Put a little bit more on the GPU. Let's see how it fits. Make sure that we've got a good I just want to make sure that we've got it <clears throat> make sure it just compresses good on, on here. Compress as well. Make sure we got enough. You know. So we'll go ahead. We'll put the fans. Back through. Okay. Like so. There you go. Just gonna push down on it a little bit. That's not gonna work. Okay. I'm gonna start back. I'm gonna go in reverse. So I'm gonna go seven. Six, five, four, three, don't slip, three, two, be sure not to over tighten. Okay, they will stop. Once they stop, do not try and force it. So I'm, all I'm doing is once it's down, I am making sure that it is spreading correctly. This does add a little bit of extra time, but we want to do it right. Like I said, the stuff on here was just, I mean, it was, it was caked dry. It was really hard to get off. I think I did it off camera, but it was pretty rough to get off. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's a lot better. It's not caked everywhere. It is a good spread rate it covers the entire die it's not thick it's evenly spread um i just put a dot a little piece size one on this one this one i did in the diagonal as you see I think this, this time I actually 
went one through seven. So that's fine. Either way, it ends up going diagonal, however you do it, so that it puts even pressure all the way. Okay, now all you need to do, line up your fans and install them. Magnetic screwdrivers are the bee's knees. You don't have to be a freak beast on these, you know, when you're screwing in the screws. Um, go gently when you do this. Like I said, you don't have to be a freak beast. You can just take your time, go nice and easy. Once you get your fans screwed back in, it's time to put in the battery. So, scoot it to where you can see it. Over here. And this battery, you just, it's got a little latch on it. You just take it, okay, and push it down onto the board and it pops right in place. So that's our battery. And then to finish it up, put the back on. There's only one thing left to do. Make sure it turns on. We've done the repaste. The laptop works. Um, Everything seems to be running fine. Temperatures aren't worse. However, they aren't better. Uh, even after doing the repaste, it still hits 99 degrees. It takes it longer to get there, but the maximum clocks stay higher for longer as well. And so what's happening is the computer, uh, the firmware is telling it to hit its maximum turbo that it can. On this laptop, it's four gigahertz. Uh, on all six cores, all 12 threads. So it hits four gigahertz, just boom, 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 consistently and continually pounding it, but it's able to stay at those clocks for higher or for a longer period of time. And so effectively the repaste worked, even though the temperatures didn't go down, uh, it's still able to get higher clocks, which is gonna result in more performance. Um, unfortunately, Dell made a change to their firmware that you can no longer change the power on your laptop so that you can actually undervolt. And so do, if you have one that you didn't update the firmware on, um, or there's a way to go back, I'm not sure if you can or not. Some people say you can, it kind of, there's been some people that's bricked them. Um, but if you can go back to the firmware that allows you to undervolt the CPU and the GPU, as well as doing a repaste, I believe you would be able to get higher clocks more consistently and lower temperatures. And what this really tells me is that the cooling system just isn't enough to keep up with the hardware that's in these laptops. And keeping people from having the ability to undervolt um, because they run hot. They, they're using more power than they actually need to to achieve the performance that they were designed to achieve. Uh, and so hopefully in the future, this will all be remedied. Listen. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, listen, I've got some Raspberry Pi videos that you can watch. I've got some IT career advice videos that you can watch, as well as some other laptop reviews um, that, we can, that you can watch as well. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe and have a great day. Hope you learned something.